native, the native people who lived here that we know are the Lenape Indians. And they didn't actually live here. They lived in New Jersey and maybe uh, down that way. But they came up here every summer here to hunt and to swim and to enjoy for the same reason people have been coming here ever since. Uh, and also to trade with the Mohawks uh, who lived in up, upper upstate New York and the whole Iroquois nation. And they would, but mostly the Mohawk tribe came down here. They did an excavation when they put the sewer system in Narrowsburg. And they found it was one of the major trading grounds between the Lenape and the Mohawk. Wow. They'd hired, you know when you do, when you get federal money to do a construction, you have to hire an archaeologist. So you hire what is called a no-see archaeologist, who's not going to find anything. Right? So you hire one to give you a clean bill of health. So they hired their no-see archaeologist, who turned up one of the major trading areas between the... This was the guy hired not to find anything. So that tells you how. Uh, so this was an area that the, uh, the Native Americans, the Indians, but before the Lenape, the Algonquin, the Iroquois, there were like proto pre Indians that lived here. And these are the ones that made that made shelters out of these rock cliffs. So they go back before and Lenape's were the original people. They called themselves the original people. And their stories talk about crossing the Bering Straits. So they, the original people here, these are the people who lived here before the original people. But, so uh, how many people have heard of the American Revolution? <laughs> all right, good, so we're all set. So uh, um, the, uh, this was the bloodiest battle uh, when it happened. In the whole American Revolution, wow. later there were more bloody battles. Uh, but it came about. You might have heard of a man named uh, General Sullivan, after whom this county is named. And Sullivan was a particularly nasty war as hell. So Sullivan was a particularly nasty guy. And so they sent him into upstate New York to burn all the Iroquois and Mohawk villages and to destroy their crops and their apple trees and girdle all the apple trees so that, that they, they, they destroyed it. So, uh, so we named our county after this man. <laughs> 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 it's the human rights commission. We now have a human rights commission. But, but nonetheless, this is, this is what happened. He was a particularly, but he never came to Sullivan County. He's ne he was never here. So why we named ourselves after him is a mystery, but nonetheless we did. And we're proud Sullivanites. But Not the, the, <laughs> the, the British decided that what they would do uh, was uh, match what had been done. So they sent um, Joseph Brandt, Fayadanaga, he was an Indian, who led, who was a British commander and a brilliant military strategist and uh, a man who uh, kept a record of this battle, wrote about it. He was a learned man, as was the, um, um, the uh, militia, the, the revolutionary leader who, who led the militia, militia Hathorne, who also kept notes of the battle. So they both escaped and lived, and so they both wrote about this battle. They met after, afterwards, after the war. They met and they, they talked about this battle. Uh, Brandt went on to become a, a very accomplished man, traveled in Europe, converted to Christianity, a tra a translated the Bible into Mohawk. Uh, he was a very distinguished man. And, one, and his portrait, uh, is one was done by, um, who was that guy, Stuart, that painted all the presidents and all that? He painted his portrait. It hangs in the art museum in Cooperstown. Uh, I mean, amazing, amazing dude. So, he led a band of Indians and um, Tories down to this region and burnt every home and farm and everything he could all the way down to Minnesin, to which was Port Jervis, and um, destroyed everything he could find. And then was coming back up when the militia 
to say, you know, we can't let this guy come to into our valley and, you know, burn us out. So they were from mostly from Goshen. So they got all the shopkeepers and the farmers and the clerks and all the guys, and we'll teach that guy a lesson. And they, they had, he had about 75 men bring. Uh, and they had over 100, 150, they had a lot. And they joined up with uh, Benjamin Tustin, after whom the town of Tustin is named, who was a dentist. And, um, and they chased um, Brant back up here to the Minasink Ford, the crossing where Brant's army or a raiding party was crossing the river. And uh, for whatever reason, a shot was fired and some people think it was a nervous guy. Some people think it was somebody with sympathies. Uh -huh. Remember, uh, when the revolution happened, half the people wanted the revolution. Half the people wanted to stay Brits. That's familiar. And the other, and actually a third wanted the revolution. A third wanted to stay Brits. And a third, did, they, they, they did not care. Uh, so nobody knows. But in any event, Brits. Uh, raiders were warned, and they turned on this column of militia and separated. They were in three parts, and they separated two parts from the one. Brant's guys were, they were the cream of the crop. They were professional soldiers. They were guys that had, you know, they were Indian, skilled Indian warriors. They were, you know, and then there were the clerks and shopkeepers and accountants from, you know, and doctors from Goshen. And they tore them apart. And they, tra they, they forced them up this hill. Who rode the bike up the hill? Do you know? They forced them up the hill. And, and Hawthorne, who was no idiot, he was a military commander, knew that he needed to retreat to the high ground. And they came up to the high ground. And... We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the high ground, and then I'll keep the story going. Yeah.